Hello and welcome along to part 22 of this Dark Souls Guide and Playthrough. So we're going to finish up in the catacombs today, take on Pinwheel, that's the local area boss, and get a few items to pick up before we do that. First of all, what to do is come down this way, and that'll cause that skeleton up there to pop down here. So just take him out. Again, using your divine weapon. And then come back round the way we came originally. I go to the... Well, we're going to go right first here. And we're going to take these guys out. What we're going to do is... We're going to go and pick up the... Earlier on in the, in the previous episode, we noticed there was a weapon next to the Necromancer where we opened the... Press the switch to open the door. So we're going to go and grab that weapon. And uh, we're also going to take care of a couple of crystal lizards. And get some upgrade items. So we've already taken one of those skeletons out because that was, you know, there's two skeletons guarding there. And uh, one of them, like I say, jumps down when you go uh, across the other bridge or you, you start to go across the other bridge. Anyway, you come into this room and um, you fall through the ground. That's how you you progress in this room. Fall through, fall in, down through the hole in the ground. Um, you can raise your shield as you go through these statues. Um, because obviously they spite you. You're only going to be able to get one of the crystal lizards. You're going to have to save and uh, quit and reload to get the other one. I think there's only two in here. and uh, There might be three, but um, I only took out two of them. Uh, yeah, so twinkles and green shards. And uh, Green shards are kind of useful in this area because uh, the blacksmith who uses those uh, items to upgrade weapons is found in the catacombs. Uh, his name is Ramos and uh, we'll, we'll see him very soon actually. So come up here and uh, again you fall through the hole in the ground and uh, this takes you to the area I explained before in the first episode where you leave the item so you know where you are. It takes you to the switch that allows you to switch the first bridge and um, so you'll recognize this area. And uh, you'll have a few skeletons to take out along the way, and uh, some of those wisps as well. Just run past these wisps and run past the skeletons that are uh, animating. Um, what we're going to do is you can actually roll off of these bridges. Um, as they kind of serve as like shortcuts as well. So you can see that there's like a that takes you back to the, you know, the, the area where you go to the bonfire. We've already been here a second ago. Um, so if you come down these stairs, this takes you to the switch and the, the two skeletons. Remember I said in the previous episode, these guys can fall off the edge. And uh, it usually always happens. One of them will at least fall off. And in the previous episode we had the necromancer to take out in the room down there and we also had to press the switch, but we've done all that so it's nothing that we need to worry about. And um, here you go, you can see the item up there. Um, I should have picked it up earlier on, I didn't, we'll get it when we go around the next time. So what to do is, you want to roll off here. You can roll off, uh, you know, just like I did there. Come down here, pick up the green shard and then you can just roll off again. And uh, sometimes there'll be a skeleton down here, the one that's fallen down, sometimes lives. So Vamos opens a shortcut for you. Uh, that, so there you go, that skeleton had survived the fall, so make sure you let him you take him out. He opens a shortcut for you, don't go through there yet, there's some dangerous enemies through there. Uh, we'll get there another way. So he, uh, like I say, does fire weapons with green shards. And um, he can also, um, he can do chaos weapons as well. 
He sells rudimentary equipment, nothing special. Um, he's very curt and um, bad mooded, bad tempered. You can hear he's got a strange, like, voice effect. And um, some people believe that that was a, you know, that maybe FromSoft lost the original files and that they something somehow retrieved them and they were damaged. Uh, I think it's actually FromSoft attempt at uh, creating a sound effect, and the sound effect is supposed to be. Um, a disembodied, uh, not a disembodied person, it's obviously a skeleton that has no, a voice unmodified basically by skin, larynx, vocal cords, these kind of things, which doesn't really make sense because you need all these things to speak anyway, so but I think that that was the intention behind that kind of strange sound effect. Doesn't work, it doesn't work very well at all. Um, if you go through the fog gate at the opposite end of this bridge, it just takes you to another area. Um, we're not going to go through it quite yet. We're going to actually approach it from the other end. Um, so one of them fell off and the other one... They both, if you go far enough along the bridge, both of them will jump down from above. Um, anyway, we're going to go and pick the, the weapon up now. The one that we've been, I've been promising to pick up for the last two episodes. Here we go. Pop down here and then pop onto the other ledge. Uh, be careful not to walk down there, uh, you'll have to go all the way around again. So we pick up the Great Scythe, that was the weapon that we could see from the, the room with the Necromancer. Um, it's one of the best weapons in the game, it's got fantastic reach, dead angle is unbelievable. Um, it's fast, it's very fast as well, and uh, when you upgrade it to like plus 15 it's completely deadly. And um, you can buff it as well. There's something else about it I'm forgetting. Uh, it's got bleed effect, that's what it is. It's got bleed effect. Anyway, there's a few enemies up here and wisps and whatnot. And I don't know if you if you noticed in just a few minutes ago when we were kind of um, falling off the edges to get to this great scythe, you could see that there was an item way, way below. Uh, you can actually get to that item by rolling off, see the wee ledge to the left here? If you roll off to the right with the spikes and whatnot. Um, if you roll off to the right, um, it actually takes you down to the area where Vamos opened the shortcut for us. Um, it takes you actually to like a ledge just above that area and uh, you can pick up the cleric set there so if you're desperately interested in the cleric set that's where to find it um, I'm not bothered, I'm not going to go for it um, It takes me to an area I don't want to go to as well um, It's also a shortcut to the boss area So take these guys out um, You can see when we dropped down through the hole in the, in the roof that there was, um, there was a room behind us when we fell down uh, don't go in there yet, there's a, a prowling demon in there, um, but we'll go back for him later. So there's two enemies waiting to ambush you in here, and there's a dodgy looking wall, so I guess you know you know that you can break through that wall. And uh, this is the room actually uh, uh, where the fog gate at the opposite end of the bridge. If you go through the fog gate, it basically brings you to this room. There's a the fog gate there. So, a quick shortcut to the bonfire, just in case you die um, in the area we're going next. Uh, this next room is a wee... I make a mess of this, actually, but... I suppose it could cause some people problems. Um, you've got archers in this room, and uh, you've also got uh, skeletons to deal with. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and I make a mess of it. You'll see. You'll see that in a moment. So there's an archer to your right. There he is behind us. Uh, normally you can take him out, but um, for some reason he fell down there. And um, get the plunging attack off. I should really be kind of uh, two-handing my weapon here, so I can take these out in one, one shot. These guys. My timing is completely crap here. Yeah, you can see that the plus five divine club is not absolutely fantastic, but it suffices in this area. Don't forget about him. So you'll come into this room and uh, we're going to encounter a giant skeleton who's going to fall through the roof. There we go. But uh, we can one shot these guys almost. And uh, we pick up in that crypt. 
or sarcophagus. We pick up the Dark Moon Seance Ring. This is an important ring for um, if you're interested in the the what covenant is it? Um, oh, the Dark Moon Covenant. Yeah, sorry. And uh, it's got an association with Lord Gwyn's son, Gwyn, uh, son slash daughter, Gwendolyn. Uh, Gwendolyn was born a boy but raised as a girl. And uh, with that ring, you can actually remember in Anor Orlando we entered the tomb with Lord, the statue of Lord Gwyn. And um, it's actually an illusory wall there. And uh, you use, you put that ring on, and basically uh, um, it, it, it opens the illusory wall and um, allows you to either join the Dark Moon Covenant or take on a boss and uh, we'll use it later to take on the boss because I'm not interested in the Covenant so another Necromancer and uh, I think we also get the Lantern here, the Skull Lantern which is the weapon that they use but it's it's essential for the Tomb of the Giants because it's the only like, or it's not the only but um, if you're a melee character, it's basically your main form of uh, illumination in the Tomb of the Giants. If you're um, an intelligence or faith build, you can use like sorceries and spells and whatnot um, to cast light. There you go. Uh, the Lantern, I like the Tomb of the Giants, Nito's Light, blah blah blah. So make sure before you go to the Tomb of the Giants, and uh, these one of the necromancers is guaranteed to drop it. It's usually the last one, um, but that for some reason he dropped it. He isn't the last necromancer for us. We've got uh, one or two more, I think. Um, anyway, come up here. So again, I mentioned these statues before. Tranquil Walker piece. Sorry, I'll mention this quickly. That's the sorcery or spell that the stone giant knights. Or giant stone knights in dark root uh, basin and garden use uh, to slow your walking pace to uh, um, to like treacle speed, as if you're walking through molasses or whatever. Um, and I believe some people like to use it in uh, PvP. Never used it in PvE. Probably I don't know even know if it works, but in PvE I guess it will. But um, anyway, this is the area where I had trouble before. Uh, the first time around here, remember the necromancer stood at the entrance to the kind of pathway, and he was firing his uh, fire bolts at me, and it was making it much more difficult than it needed to be. So this was basically kind of led back towards the, the start of the level or start of the area. Uh, so we'll have to work our way around here again, unfortunately. Doesn't bother me. You could use a homeward bone, I suppose, but yeah, I'd rather just get the souls. And yeah, the statues, that's what I was going to mention, the statues in here, they all have, if you look closely at them, they all, um, they all bear basically the boss in this area, Pinwheel, um, it, it's like, it's like an individual that's, sorry, three individuals that's been formed into one being, the mother, the child, and Pinwheel himself, and uh, they're all represented by, um, death masks. So you get the mask of the father, the mask of the mother, and the mask of the child. And if you look at these statues up close, you'll actually see the same depiction, i.e. the same masks um, engraved into the, the statues. Um, I'll talk more about Pinbule and the lore about Pinbule. It's quite a complicated lore, actually, um, but I'll try and talk about it without getting um, too confuddled and confused. Um, which is normally the way with me. <laughs> so what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to take on the... We're going to go to the room that I said don't go to because it's, it's got a prowling demon in it. So we're going to go and do that. So again, the way to go there, to get there is to go this way. Fall off the edge. Be careful not to go down there. And uh, yep, we're back here and there's a room there, so you just go in here. I'm actually going to use Power Within, I think this is the first time I've used Power Within in this game, in this playthrough. And um, we got it whenever we picked it up in uh, Light Town. Um, and uh, yeah, Power Within is one of the best sorceries, or pyromancy, sorry, in this game. Um, it increases your damage output by 40%, as well as your stamina regen. Um, at the cost of like, a small amount of health reduction each second. Um, but it's really worth it, so if you're going to use it, top up your health. You'll see the difference it makes to me taking out this uh, Prowling Demon. 
And this Prowling Demon has more health than um, like the one that we encountered in Undead Parish. Um, remember the one that has the access to Dark uh, Root Basin Garden? Anyway. One, two. Three, four, four and, a, four and a bit, five hits in total, but yeah, makes a big difference. So I'll come back here and pick up these eyes of um, de eyes of death, which are a, a an item you use to increase your rank in uh, the Dark Moon Covenant, is it? Uh, no, sorry, the what covenant is it? The Gravelord Covenant? I can't remember. I'm not interested in Covenants, it's not something that I, I, I like or enjoy. Um, you can actually get access to the Gravelord Covenant through this uh, room. Uh, one of these coffins allows you... Gra Gravelord Nito, who's the area boss of the Tomb of the Giants, has to still be alive, there you go. If you nestle in the coffin, um, it transports you to um, Nito's crypt, his tomb. and. Um, yeah, you can uh, you can join the covenant there, but like I say, Nito has to be alive for you to do that, and you need those eyes of death. Uh, this is a I kind of make a mistake here. I, I, you can see I've got the Black Knight sword. Um, I should have changed over to the Divine Club, and um, because there's still a Necromancer around here, and uh, these guys are going to regenerate. Uh, I realise that's too late. And it's only when I'm starting to go down the ladders I realise oh they're still they're gonna you know reanimate. Uh, so I need to get my my divine club out. And uh, there you go, easy. And so we're gonna come down. This is a I like this fight. There's a you can see there's like two wee strange marks in the ground. Uh, I'm sure by this point you realise what that signifies. That signifies that you're going to fall through the ground. And um, depending on where you fall through the ground, you're going to land on top of a Black Knight. And he's wielding the Black Knight Great Axe, uh, which is one of the best weapons in the game. Um, now make sure you've topped up your health. Um, I'm going to use the Black Knight Sword because I'd rather have that than the Divine Club. The Divine Club won't do much damage against him. I picked the wrong hole. That sounded terrible. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, yep. This is a brilliant move. I love that jumping attack, one handed jumping attack with the Black Knight uh, Great Axe. I'm lucky, I'm very lucky because I'm down to one Estus and I'm very lucky. I've not got 100, I get the Black Knight shield, which is excellent. That's one of the best shields in the game. When you upgrade that with 10 Titan, Twinkling Titanite, you get 74 stability, which is more than enough for New Game, and New Game Plus in fact. And um, it also gives you 95% uh, block against fire damage, so one of the best uh, shields in the game. Um, his weapon is the Black Knight Great Axe, it's one of the best weapons, it's so fast, and it's uh, you know devastating. Um, anyway. So a proud knight. We come to one of the most annoying areas in the whole of uh, Dark Souls. You can hear that strange noise. That's uh, bone wheel skeletons, and uh, they might as well be called staggered skeleton. I don't know, something stagger wheels, because uh, they, yeah, like like I say, they stagger you massively. That they're, they're basically they they roll around in this construction that's basically made of a. Uh, Made of a uh, what? Yeah, scale. Made of. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so basically, what you want to do is, you want to use a, a ranged weapon here to take these guys out. And um, because if you go down there when they're all alive, uh, they will like you know surround you and kill you very quickly. Uh, they stagger you very quickly by rolling into you. Um, they're bone wheels made of wood, skeleton, and like blades or whatever. And um, it staggers you and takes all your st stamina away and takes all your health away very quickly. Um, and there's like about five or six of them down there. Uh, the only benefit you've got is it, it, you want to be a f if you go down there, you want to be at a fast movement speed so that you can dodge out the way. 
what you usually do is you face them, lock on, and then as they approach you, you'd like dive left or right, um, and then instantly like you know uh, lock off of them and run towards them and take them out. And um, but you'll see me doing that in a moment. Um, you can see I've only got three uh, dragon slayer arrows left, so I've got to make these count. And there's you can see there's two more up there and there's two more down here. And that was unfortunate. You can also do a plunging attack here, but you um, need to make sure that it works. So that's what I'm going to maybe try and do. It. That's good, I'm lucky there. And that was my last, uh, I think that was my last uh, arrow, yeah. But there's still some more up there. I can use the Hawk Ring, because the Hawk Ring in increases the range and increases the damage over range of the arrows, but you can see it does a minuscule amount of damage, 9. Um, but the good thing is it will bring these, sorry there's three. it looks like there's three uh, Bone Wheel Skeletons left over there. I've taken the Eagle Shield out as well, just because it's got higher stability. But yeah, we're lucky there, we get, uh, get to one-shot him. So, take the Hawk Ring off now, because I don't need it. And uh, Havel's Ring will do is, you know, is more beneficial for us, because we want to be moving at a fast uh, movement speed. And want to be able to fast roll. The danger of these bone wheels is if you get ganged up on by them, and um, when they surround you, you know you're you're basically dead at that point. So dive out of the way. I don't. I do it too. You know, too quickly, too soon. And um, but you, like say you then want to run uh, towards them and get your hitting against them before they have time to. That's it. That's the way to do it. And uh, that's them all taken out. You can see that if you'd walked, see Vamos is a uh, blacksmithing area is just to the right over there. And if you'd kind of come out here before, you would have been killed very quickly. And um, there's the last necromancers up here. So we're going to take him out. And that's the last of the necromancers, so when, if you ever come back through here again, you can just use your normal weapon. And um, that ladder takes you back up to the, the room with the Black Knight in it. And um, So now we're just going to go and take on Pinwheel, we've got nothing left to do. That item that you see over there, that's the cleric set I was telling you about before. And down to the right there, that's how you get to Vamos. That's the, the, the passageway opened up for us. But we don't need to do anything with him just now. We're going to come back to him later, actually, because I want to get a Chaos Weapon. Um, yeah, that's a Cleric set. Um, I think there's a couple of items that you can pick up on your way down there. At least two items. This is the way to the boss, Pinwheel. Uh, Pinwheel is an interesting uh, boss. He's uh, extremely easy. Um, he blasts fireballs at you. So you can use something like the Black Knight Shield or the Dragon Crest Shield if you wish. But honestly, it's totally unnecessary because um, he's so easy. What he does is um, he basically clones himself. Um, if you it, you want to kill him as quickly as possible, because um, if you don't, he clones himself, and um, these clones die very quickly. You know, they die instantly as soon as you hit them. But only one of the the pinwheel clones takes damage. The real pinwheel. Uh, what else do you need to be to? There's nothing else you really need to do to be prepared for this fight. Top up your health. I've got no Estus flask left, but I don't need them. I feel sorry for Pinwheel, he's a tortured soul. He seems to have stolen the, the power of Gravelord Nito, and he's been, I don't know if he's been punished for it, but um, he, he's doing experiments here, you can see he's still tinkering, he's got books, he's got skeletons, this is obviously some kind of laboratory for him. And uh, you'll see he's the bottom creature, and he's holding his wife and child in his back. That's his wife and child at the top, and that's, Nito, uh, that's Pinwheel at the bottom of the... 
the, the feast. Um, one, two, three, it's done. That's how easy that fight is. So he gives you the right of kindling. I think that's what he stole from Gravelord Nito, and the right of kindling allows you to kindle your bonfires up to 20 Estus Flasks. Um, uh, you have to pay humanity to do that. So one humanity gets you... He also has a chance to drop masks here. So you'll either get the Mask of the Mother, the Father, or um, the Child. The Mask of the Mother is actually the worst of them. Uh, but don't worry, you, there's a vendor um, patches that you can buy these masks from later on in the game. Yeah, sorry if I spoiled that bit for you. I guess most people have played this game. I wasn't thinking there. Um, I actually put the Tomb of the Giants on before I put this video on. I apologise about that. Um, so come along here and pick up Solo the Proud Knight. Um, and uh, the next area is Tomb of the Giants, which you see I've already uh, uploaded it out of sequence. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in the lore of Pinwheel, and it is very interesting, um, check out... Um, Dave Control Lives videos and uh, Vati videos, videos. Um, they have plenty of information about Pinwheel. Um, anyway, I hope this uh, episode's been helpful for you. And uh, in the next episode, it's Tomb of the Giants, but we're one ahead, so see you later.